Five, four, do it. Three, two, two. Do it. Hello, Arminators. I am here with another spicy, dope video, and we are reacting to the throne of Allah. Mind blowing. This has been a highly requested video, and I figured I'd play some Spider Man and check out the video with you guys. Here we go. All right. Wow, it looks dope. I always find these religious videos very interesting, to be honest. Dude, where am I going? All the praises for Allah, and who is the author Jeff. of all existence, the merciful servant, nice, and the most merciful generous servant makes great videos, creation, by the way. While he is also the all compelling. He is the only one worthy of our worship, having no partners, no associates, no sons, no daughters, no one whom he must consult, and no one or anything which has any comparison with him. All the praise is for Allah, who is the king of all who claim sovereignty, the only one who has the right to legislate for his creatures. He is the giver of life. He is the causer of death, while death has no effect upon him, because he is the ever-living, the self-subsisting, the eternal and the only absolute. All the praise is for Allah, who has power over all things, and there is in reality no power and no strength, no influence to cause benefit or detriment except oh. through him. It is he who created this complex world, the seen and the unseen, the evident and the speculative, the earth and all that is on it and everything that is in it. It is he who sent his messengers and prophets, alayhim salam with the common message of strict monotheism, which simply means that there is absolutely no one worthy of worship, no one worthy of our obedience, except the Almighty, the One, the Absolute, and who has no partners. The earlier messages which changed the world in the area in which the prophets were sent, those messages we know have changed and even the prophets who brought them, their names are now lost. So I like how they are talking about Allah is kind of like the all-seeing, the all-knowing, um, and is like responsible for every little thing in the universe. Because I know how scientists like to talk about how um, Allah doesn't exist and things like that. Now me, let me give you a little bit of a background about who I am. I am basically an agnostic, meaning that... I don't necessarily follow a religion, I don't necessarily believe in God, but if you can prove it to me, I mean, I'm happy to believe. I won't just disregard it if there's evidence, you know? And, I'll, you know, when I look at the religion of Islam, it literally is the closest thing to um, God, in my opinion. If there was a God, I think it's the closest thing. I think it's it, it would be the religion that would make me convert in a way. Um, I, it's it's very hard for people to understand that when I say that because people are like why don't you be Christian 
Well, Christianity has always seemed like a lie to me in some ways. It, it constantly contradicts itself. Whereas the Quran, um, if you look through history, has no, it really has no contradictions to its own text. Messenger, calling people to worship Allah alone and to avoid the worship of false. Now that is interesting. He sent to every nation a messenger, and some of those messengers may have um, put out false gods, or maybe they misinterpreted what Allah had sent them for, and they twisted it, which is human nature. If you look throughout history, humans always twist the words of others. I know I can sometimes tell. I I'll just be honest. I tell a friend something. And they have to tell somebody else completely different what I said. So it is, it is possible to have false gods. Like Allah could be the true God, and all these other gods could be the false gods. Um, uh, while Jesus, they say Jesus does exist. Um, he was not like the Son of God. They, and I believe in Islam, they believe God is. Um, I mean, they believe Jesus is just. Maybe he was a prophet or of some sort, but he wasn't like the son of God, this you know? Essential so message proof that Jesus did exist, has been which Islam preserved is in Islam in a way that it was never preserved on. before. Yeah. Not because the message was different, because it was the same message, but because of the fact that there would be no other prophets who would come after Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So therefore that message now had to be protected. It had to be preserved in a way none of the earlier messages were preserved. I will relate this. What you say, you have come to know 40 years back. And what you call the Big Bang is already mentioned in the book which I read, the glorious Quran. It's mentioned 1400 years ago in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30, which says, Avalam yaral kafru. Do not the unbelievers see, anna samawati wal arda, kaan tarat kanfutak nahuma, that the heaven and the earth were joined together and we clove them asunder. What you're talking about, the Big Bang, I try to imagine compressing a spring. I push it. I remember meeting with one of my friends he was an Arabic guy and he told me I'm like he asked me he says do you believe in God uh, closer and do you closer believe and closer in together so it's smaller and smaller and, and smaller said, Brother and I've read. stored a tremendous read. amount of energy in that spring and when yeah, I let it go it bursts out it bursts out it bursts out the creation no, of the universe read. which you came to know 40 years back that, is already mentioned in this book the glorious Quran 1400 years ago who could have mentioned that in the Quran so the atheist will say, maybe someone wrote, maybe it's a fluke, maybe it's a guesswork. A human being, regardless of who they are, or where they are, or what they do, will have this curiosity. They'll want to know, why am I here? How did I get here? And do I have a purpose? And if so, what is it? The only one who would really be able to answer that question would be the Creator Himself. If there is a creator, it would be up to him to tell us why we were created and what he expects from us and what this life is really about. Allah has shown the people from the time of Adam until right now, has shown the people what he wants from them. And it's a very simple thing. And that is that worship be for him alone without any partners. In fact, we know this life to be a test from Almighty God. That's why we're born and that's why we die because there has to be a beginning and an end for us to be tested on. The next life, after this life, no one will ever die again, a bad person or a good person. 
both are brought back and they continue to live in the next life, either in good shape or not so good shape, depending on how they did on the test. The worship of the God of Abraham, that was what was taught by these prophets. The Lord of the Arsh and Kursi, we're talking about the Lord of the worlds. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. We're talking about the Lord of the entire universe and beyond. The entire universe and beyond. You know, we live in this dunya and we are fascinated with this dunya which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed has created in a beautiful manner. We're fascinated. There are over billions of people which live on this dunya at this moment in time. Over six billion people that live on the dunya at this moment in time. This dunya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so big that there is space in this dunya for billions and billions and billions of more people. But what is this dunya in comparison to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created out there? This dunya is insignificant. This dunya is meaningless to Allah. It means nothing. It is worthless. So worthless. It does make sense. It does make sense, though. Like compare it with the sun. What, compare it to what's the up there with you know star. Allah and stuff. You know more science that stuff than is me. True. You'll be able to tell then me better. What we do on Earth Take is just like a test Earth to just and you place it inside the sun, it's like and you will be able purpose, to place you know one point three million Earths in the sun. One point three million Earths in the sun. Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest. The sun is one star. One star. There are stars out there which are millions of times bigger than the sun. You need, you tell me this, that you need millions and millions of stars to make one galaxy. And then you tell me this, that there are zillions of galaxies out there. Let me tell you on top of this, my friend. After this, whatever you see above, whatever you see above, when you raise your head and you look above, whatever you see above, the zillions and zillions and zillions of galaxies, let me tell you, this is everything there is within the first heaven. Everything there is within the first heaven and Allah is the creator of seven heavens seven heavens and the distance between the first heaven and the second heaven is 500 years Yeah, in science, like, I almost think that Allah maybe for hard for you to get to another galaxy on purpose. You know, like, maybe it was done for a reason. That's what I like to think anyways. It would make so much sense. So, yeah, here is Start of Allah Part 2. Uh, mind blowing. So we were talking about the galaxies and the distances between stars um, and the heavens. Um, and I was talking about why maybe Allah purposely did it like that so humans could not reach Allah. He purposely did that. So that would show that Allah is more powerful, of course. Wow, how do you get to this part? How do you even get through here? Maybe you click triangle. All right. Okay, let's see. Got to start the next part. Mr. Lee. One, two, three. 
you know, the distance that can be covered in 500 years, at what speed? Only Allah knows. Only Allah knows. But it will take 500 years to get from the first heaven to the second heaven. 500 years from the second to the third, third to the fourth, fourth to the fifth, fifth to the sixth, sixth to the seventh. Every time it will take 500 years. After the seven heavens, Oh, man. You all read the Ayatul Kursi. You all know the Ayatul Kursi. After this, you have the Kursi of Allah. You have the chair of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know these seven heavens that we've just talked about. In comparison to the Kursi of Allah, they're non-existent. They're meaningless. Rasulullah has given an example in a hadith. He said to Allah, the seven heavens are meaningless. But that's because Allah is just something we cannot comprehend. Like I said, it's something that's so far beyond we cannot comprehend. Just to give sure. us a little bit of... But I can't, you know, like, like I said, I don't follow any religion. But in this religion, what he's saying is true in that culture, you know? understanding with regards to the seven heavens in comparison to the kursi of Allah. Take a ring from your finger, take it off, the small ring that you have, and place it, let's say, in a desert, the Sahara Desert. It's the biggest desert in the world. You know that ring that we take off from our fingers and place it in the Sahara Desert? Oh, man. What, what comparison is in between the ring and the Sahara Desert? Nothing. Nothing. The seven heavens is the ring and the kursi of Allah is the Sahara Desert. After the kursi of Allah, you have the arsh of Allah. You have the arsh of Allah. Again, Rasulullah has given, has explained, so just so that we can understand. Take the ring, place it in the desert. This time, the ring is the kursi and the arsh is the desert. What is the kursi in comparison to the arsh of Allah? Nothing. Then you have angels which carry the arsh of Allah. Their heads are in the seventh heaven and their feet are in the lowest earth. My friends, then you have the Lord of the arsh and kursi. He is beyond the size of Allah. Who Allah is, what Allah is. The greatness of Allah is beyond the comprehension of my little mind. This And that's what he that's what you're just talking about. It is beyond the comprehension of our little minds, you know, like Allah is something that you cannot comprehend. Okay, understandably, you gotta understand that it's not something you can comprehend at all. Oh, what should I cook? Ooh, yeah, I just, I'm sorry, I was playing Spider Man a little bit. Just had to have some fun with these free falling web slinging. Hey, woo! So fun. Anyways, come here. Let's go. I'm sorry. We'll get back to our paid programming in just a second. Oh, gosh. Ooh. Oh. Oh, God. Haha. <laughs> Hope you guys are enjoying this gameplay. I'm just having a little fun here. Oh man. Ooh. Ah. Uh. Ooh. Okay.
Gotcha. The demons are getting cold. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. This is the bean. Not you and I are messing with. Allah, there is no God but Him that is ever living, be ever watchful. Neither slumber nor sleep overtakes him. them and what is behind them, his creation. But they do not comprehend any of his knowledge except what he wills. His throne extends Oh, ever the heavens and the earth. I want you guys to tell me, would you like me to like read the Quran or like make videos listening to it? I would definitely do that. Just, oh crap, I'm trying to get through here. By the way, guys, um, it is such a pleasure to have you guys come by my videos and enjoy them. It makes me happy that you guys check out my videos and watch them. You know, that means the world to me. If you guys didn't watch my videos, I wouldn't have, you know, a way to have an audience to get this kind of stuff out there. So I just want to say thank you so much for um, supporting me. And you guys will be seeing more videos soon. Um, always request what you guys want to see from below. Like I said, if you want me to react to more of Cor the Quran or more Azans or more Hadiths, make sure you send me links and I will get to them as soon as possible. Like I said, thank you. Join the Erlinator Army and peace.